Hey guys, David here with a preview of Mario Kart 7. Over the past week or so, we've learned a ton about the game, seen a bunch of trailers and videos and that kind of stuff, and I'm basically going to run through it all, with a focus of the network connectivity features of the game, because that is one thing Nintendo focused on quite a bit. Okay, so one of the main features in Mario Kart 7 is the Mario Kart channel, which gives you access to all the connectivity-based features like Street Pass and Spot Pass. In regards to Street Pass though, there are a couple of main features. Firstly, when you pass someone, your ghost data will be exchanged with them, meaning you can race in the time trial mode against the people you passed in the street or at school or at work and that kind of thing. And that's a pretty much expected feature, we already sort of knew about that. But, still cool. What I think is a bit more interesting though, is that if you pass someone in the street, their me will be put in your game, and then they will appear in the Grand Prix mode, aka the main mode in Mario Kart 7. But that itself is not actually the cool part, what is the cool part is your me as you're playing Mario Kart 7 will adapt the qualities that you tend to have in the game, or the characteristics I guess would be the right word. Meaning, if you like to take really sharp turns, or maybe you're really good with using shells in the game or something like that, your me will adopt those characteristics. So then when your me appears in other people's games, or other people's me's appear in your game, then their artificial intelligence will be based on that person itself. So if they're like a really slow racer, they'll be a slow racer in the Grand Prix mode. But if they're really good at certain things, then those characteristics will be highlighted. Which is pretty interesting. And while I can't imagine people's me's are going to be incredibly accurate representations of who those people are, it's still pretty neat. And I think it definitely does make those me's a bit more interesting, because if they're just in the game and it has some like generic AI attached to them, that'd be pretty dull. But the fact that they have like real people's habits attached to them, that's pretty cool. And one of the big features in Mario Kart 7 is the ability to unlock different parts for your kart. Now you can unlock all these parts by yourself, playing single player without straight pass or multiplayer or anything like that. But, if you do use straight pass, and you verse someone else's me in like the Grand Prix mode or whatever like that, then you can actually get these parts earlier. That said, the me that you are versing has to have the parts that you want. So it's those parts that you unlock. You can't just race against any me that hasn't got any unlocks themselves, but if they do have some unlocks, then you can get those earlier than you would otherwise. So there is that genuine benefit to using Street Pass more. And it definitely seems to be the deepest use of Street Pass we've seen so far. Because what you can actually do is when you pass someone via Street Pass, their information is put into the Mario Kart channel, then you can actually use that Mario Kart channel to connect with them online. So you'll basically see a list of everyone you passed via Street Pass, and you'll be able to see if they're playing Mario Kart 7 at that point. And if they are, and if they're playing online, then you can just connect with them. And in line with that, every player will have their own like player card type of thing, where you're able to share information about yourself. We can't really choose to share the information, it's just sort of there. But things like how many times you've won, how many times you've lost, in terms of like online races, as well as how many street passes you've collected, those kind of statistics. Meaning people can find out a bit more about you via street pass and when you're playing online. Beyond that though are the spot pass related features, and spot pass is the thing in the 3DS that automatically downloads new content to your system, and in Mario Kart 7 it does something very cool, and then it will download different ghosts to your system every single day. So once again the ghosts are sort of the recordings of other people's gameplays in different races. But what's really 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 cool about this feature, is that the ghosts that are downloaded are not just like some generic ghost based on AR or anything like that, they are real players ghosts, and they're all based around a similar skill level as yours. So maybe some will be a little bit slower, some will be a little bit faster, but they are basically around your level, so you can beat them, but you still might lose to them. And these ghosts are actually just from other Mario Kart 7 players, meaning as you're playing Mario Kart 7 and you're racing in these different tracks, your ghost data is being sent to Nintendo servers, and that data is being downloaded by other people. So then every day you can open up Mario Kart 7, race against these different ghosts, of which you can race up to 7 at a time, then you get these 8 player matches where it's just you and a bunch of ghosts, so you can basically see how you stack up against all these other players, but you can also like, use them sort of like a training method. So if you notice one racer who's going really well, you can basically follow their ghosts and sort of like just hang behind them, and then see how they go about finishing the race. Which means you'll get a faster time, and then more ghosts will download to your system that are even better than that, and then you know the progress continues. And all of this happens completely in the background, you do not have to do anything, it's just automatic, and that's a pretty innovative feature. And last up, we have a few details about the online multiplayer mode. So, the most important thing is there are 8 players total online in the multiplayer mode, but the frame rate is still 60 frames per second, which is pretty ridiculous. And it should be interesting to see Nintendo's being a bit optimistic with those statements, but if they're not, that's very cool. But the really interesting feature with the online side of things is known as communities. These are simply groups you can create, so anyone who has the game can create up to 8 communities. And each community has a 14 digit code, which in itself, sort of annoying, but not too bad. Then what you do is give this code to anyone, they can enter that code into their system, and then they become a part of that community. And while we don't have a ton of specifics, what the point of these communities are are to bring people together for different reasons. So for instance, you want to hold a tournament or something, you could post this code to a forum, basically say, everyone put this code into your system, and then all those people would be in the community, which would make it then very easy to organise a tournament. So I'm guessing you'll all be able to like race in the same race or something like that. Of course, with the limit of 8 players. But either way, it'll still be a very cool way of organising races, and also play with people who maybe you don't want to like 
add them to your friends list. But maybe like I just said, you like know them on a forum or something like that. And you want to put them in a community and like have easy access to playing with them without really committing to anything. And yep, that is definitely a very cool feature added to the game. Should make playing tournaments, that kind of thing, a lot easier. But that is the end of this video. Make sure to check out Nintendo3dsblog.com for some other stuff. But for now, I will talk to you later.